Hi, my name is Mike Little. Welcome to Open Tuition, the largest learning website for the ACCA. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the ACCA's corporate and business law paper, the global variant, and explain to you how you can use this website in order to help you to succeed in this ACCA exam. The syllabus. It's the same syllabus, effectively, with two slight variations, or three slight variations, when compared with the uh, English variant. So the global variant for the law paper goes as follows. The essential elements of legal systems. The essential elements of, a, of legal systems generally, of course, will vary from one country to the next, and this is global, so it has to be very generalised. Your own country um, may very well not have the same system, but there is the generalisation where the judiciary and the legislature and the secretariat need to be separated. And they may or may not be in your country, but that's ideally what should happen. And so the essential elements of legal systems is the opening part of the uh, global law syllabus. We then move on to two areas that are specifically global and not at all included in the English variant. And these two are international business transactions. Of course, the global law, then we need to consider uh, sales and purchases by uh, a manufacturer in one country uh, to a purchaser in another country, from Nepal manufacture being sold to Germany, for instance. And there's a lot of documentation involved in in these um, international business transactions. So we'll be looking at that. We're looking also at administration, um, where, um, I don't know if I got the right word there. Have I got the right word? Where alternative dispute resolution, arbitration, not administration, arbitration, alternative dispute resolution, where instead of taking a case, instead of taking a dispute to, course, to court, we can agree to subject, the two parties can agree, to subject themselves to arbitration and get an independent arbitrator to consider the facts and make a decision as to what is right and who is right and how much money should they should be compensated. So that will be international business transactions. Then we come to another particular element, that's the transportation and payment for international business transactions. There's a lot, again, a lot of paperwork involved in the uh, letters of credit and bills of lading and so on. So those are the, the examples of the documentation involved. But the transportation is a fascinating area. Um, the International Chamber of Commerce uh, has established a set of rules called the INCO terms. And those INCO terms, and these are fully explained, all of this is fully explained within the, the lecture notes. When I get there, I shall tell you about them. Um, so the INCO terms affect for all the people that have signed up for the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods. INCO terms does apply unless specifically excluded. And there will be questions within the uh, law exam. There will be questions on INCO terms. There will be questions on, on all of these areas within the syllabus. Then we get formation and constitution of business organisations. and Basically, there are four. You can operate as a sole trader on your own, working out of your garage at home. You can operate as an agent for a, a bigger organisation that needs an agent, and you happen to be in the, area, in, in the area where they're looking for the agent, and so you are an agent and they are your principal. You can operate as a partnership. Many, many accountancy firms, legal firms, estate agency firms, operate as partnerships, even if they may be limited liability partnerships, they're still partnerships. And finally, companies as we know them, private companies, public companies, Jewish companies, charitable companies, company law. And that area, the formation, this, room, this area downwards, is exactly the same as the English law syllabus. So um, it has to be that way because it's not possible for the ACCA to establish material sufficient to cover 196 member nations of the United Nations and to say, well, in Bhutan, this is the way it's operated, whereas in Vietnam, it's operated in a different way. So it has to be consistent with the English system. 
So formation and constitution of business organisations. And this is subdivided into three. First of all, we have capital and financing. Are we going to put our own money in to finance the operation? Are we going to borrow money from a bank or from the public? Are we going to issue shares? All of this is covered. And if we're going to issue shares, what sort of shares are we going to issue? All of this is covered in lectures and in the course notes. Management, administration and the regulation of companies. This is basically, it's about directors, the management of companies, the board of directors, partners in a partnership, principals in an agency, principal situation. So the management of the company, we're looking also at company secretaries, at auditors, we're looking at lenders to the company and how involved they may become. Management administration, the forms that have regularly to be sent off to the registrar of companies, the requirement about meetings and resolutions being passed. So this is a, it's a fascinating area. In fact, the whole syllabus is fascinating. The whole paper, it's a wonderful paper. Insolvency law. Unfortunately, companies do die. They, they are um, struggling financially. They have no future. So they decide that they'll go into liquidation. Are we going to use a liquidator or a receiver or an administrator? What, what are we going to use uh, in order to bring about the death of this company? Or is the company worth resurrecting and starting off again? We look at all of those separately. I'm just going to draw a little picture, a structure of, of how this lot fits into the, the syllabus generally, because this last one is pervasive and affects everything. So we have the essential elements, and then beneath that we have three separate subdivisions. We have international business transactions, transportation and payment for international business transactions, and then finally we have the formation and constitution of business organisations. Now that last one itself subdivides into three. So we have now the uh, capital and financing, management and admin, and insolvency law. And throughout, and affecting each element of this, each priorly mentioned, previously mentioned element of this syllabus, throughout we have the concept of illegality, fraud, corporate fraud, and criminal behaviour illegalities that do go on. So we cover here, we cover insider dealing, money laundering, abuse of company name, fraudulent trading, wrongful trading, and most recently, in 2010, there was passed the piece of legislation called the Bribery Act, and the Bribery Act is now within the syllabus. So corporate fraud and criminal behaviour affect everything, every separate single element of this syllabus, and we look at them in the course notes and in lectures. Moving on, the exam itself. It's computer based, but there is also a paper alternative because it's not always the situation that there is a computer based centre near where you are or within reasonable distance of you. So there is a paper based alternative. They are, as near as can be, identical. I'll tell you where there is a slight difference when I look at the next slide. 25 objective test questions, two marks each, that's 50 marks. And 20 objective test questions, one mark each, that's another 20 marks. And then finally, section C. And this is the only area where there's a minor difference between computer-based and paper-based. So within section C, we have five questions. These are subdivided into for instance, two, two, two split, so three separate questions within the one. Or it might be a four, two split, or it could be a three, three split. But so either way, any of those ways, we have six marks available for five separate questions. In a computer-based exam, it's tick boxes and, and identify uh, what matches up with what. So there are uh, it's basically objective test questions, multiple choice questions. And there are five questions, six marks each gives us 30. That's 100%. It's a two hour exam, so only 1.2 minutes for each question, for each mark. And all questions are compulsory. Now, if I move on, the paper based exam. Section A, exactly the same. Exactly the same, word for word the same. Section B, Exactly the same, tick boxes. Section C, there's a slight variation because it's no longer on computer. So 
In section C, you have to write your answers. It's still a 2-2-2 two, two, two split or a 4-2 or a 3-3 three, three split, but you have to handwrite your answers. So for two marks, for a 2-2-2 two, two, two split, you're chasing two marks. And basically, I have 1.2 minutes per mark. Well, in the paper-based exam, there is an additional 15 minutes available to you to reflect and to compensate you for the manual effort that is involved in writing out answers. Is it easier? No, it can't be easier. Computer-based, manual-based are, as near as makes no difference at all, exactly of similar content and difficulty. And of course, all exams are difficult. What's the point of having an easy exam? So, yes, they are both difficult, but with practice, and preparation and motivation, these exams are certainly possible. Pass mark again, 50%. Every ACCA exam has a pass mark of 50%. In the law paper, it is a crime of students not to have attempted the full paper. In a multiple choice question, if you don't know the answer, you move on, but you come back to it. And if at the end of the exam, in the last two or three minutes, you realise that you've got four questions still unanswered, guess. You've nothing to lose. There are no negative marks in any of the exams. You've nothing to lose by getting something wrong. So guess the answer. Four questions. You've got normally four choices. Guess the answer. You've got a one in four chance of getting it right. Four questions. You've picked up another mark. And that one more mark could make the difference between 96 and 97 percent. The difference between winning the world prize and coming an unlucky second. I know which I would prefer. The exam itself, I'm going to emphasize this, the law paper indirectly links. There are no direct links. The law paper is unique in this respect in all the exams in ACCA, it has no direct links with any other paper. The law paper has an indirect link with financial reporting at the applied skills level, the same level as the law paper itself, the same hierarchy. And it also has an indirect link with audit and assurance. It has, in addition, an indirect link with strategic business reporting at the strategic professional level. But it has no direct links with any other paper. So you may ask, well, why should I learn it? Why, should I, why do I need it? Because when I had my own accountancy practice, it was an unusual week when I wasn't asked two or three law questions by my clients. I didn't have many clients. But I had at least two or three questions which were within my knowledge because of my knowledge of the law. So, yes, it is important. And yes, it is assumed knowledge that these three later papers, the um, financial reporting, audit and assurance and uh, strategic business reporting. What do we offer you? Well, this word keeps coming up, doesn't it? It's free. It's been on every slide so far, and I've not emphasised it. We offer free study material. We are a group of volunteers, and we've set our stall out to say, we want to help accountancy students throughout the world. And we're the only website on the internet that offers completely free, comprehensive material and lectures. We write our own course notes. We prepare our own lectures, we run our own website, and it's all free for you. Here's a picture of the front page of the law, the course notes for law. This one is the Ask the Tutor forum. This one here is Ask the Tutor. This is where you have the opportunity to direct a question on the forum to me. And I will answer, I shall answer your questions. I normally answer within, well, within hours, but certainly I try never to leave a question longer than a day. So ask me a question. I shall answer it. 
you may feel a bit embarrassed, although I don't see why, I can see no reason why you should be embarrassed, but you may decide instead to put your question on the general forum. This is this forum here. And other students are therefore invited to answer your question. They themselves may have had the same problem. They have resolved it and here they are helping you by answering it. We as tutors do monitor this general forum to make sure that there is no wrong answer being being posted and if there is we will intervene we will we will say that's not technically strictly correct and maybe this will be a, a closer more correct answer so as the tutor forum the general forum and another source of free uh, study material is articles technical articles within student account magazine they are free but such is the nature of the law paper that there are very, very few major amendments or changes in the syllabus. So there are very few technical articles written about the law paper. There are, when INCO terms was changed, there are articles written about that. When the Bribery Act was introduced, articles were written about that. So there are technical articles, and you really should keep abreast of those by scanning through either your student account and hard copy, or by looking at the internet at the Open Tuition site. We have a separate technical articles page for the, for the law students to look at. Finally, I just want to mention how you can help us, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we've spread the word. Tell your colleagues, tell your fellow students at college and university. Tell your siblings who are thinking about going into your accountancy. They may actually be doing uh, school exams and accountancy and bookkeeping. The material is on our site that will help them to prepare for those exams. So spread the word. We would appreciate it because we are only able to grow stronger by you spreading the word and expanding our student body. We have around half a million students registered with us going through different accountancy qualifications. But we need more. We need more and more and more to make us bigger. And if we're bigger, we can then afford to extend the range of services that we offer to accountancy students worldwide. We can uh, create new uh, pages on the website. We can offer material for other qualifications. So by making us bigger, you'll make us stronger. By making us stronger, we are able to expand. And you can help other students on the forums. You can join in on the, on the general forum. Please, please don't be tempted to answer questions on the Ask the ACCA Tutor Forum. Those questions are addressed to me. I shall answer them. Please don't you answer those forums. One final thing. You've chosen the global variant. If you have any aspiration at all to qualify and move to the UK and acquire a practicing certificate whereby you can practice in your own name as an accountant or as an auditor, you have to have passed the English law variant and the English tax variant and the, at this stage the um, strategic business reporting variant. You have, and the Advanced Audit and Assurance variant, the English one, not the international one. So if you have any aspiration at all of working and practising as an accountant in the UK, you have to have passed the English variant law exam. Bear that in mind before you get stuck into the global law variant studies. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. I hope that we will continue to see you over the next two or three years. I hope to hear from you on the Ask the Tutor Forum. But meanwhile, good luck with your studies.